This is section 7-2, part A, ellipses and circles. Your I can statements for this section. I can analyze and graph equations of ellipses and circles, and I can use equations to identify ellipses and circles. So an ellipse is the locus of points in a plane such the sum of the distances from two fixed points called the foci is constant. So what this means is if you were to take a string and you are to attach the string here and here, and the string is kind of loose, when you stretch the string out, the distance from this point and this point, if I stretch that string, it'll touch the ellipse here. If I move the string along a little bit farther, it would touch here and here. But the distance between, like if I add those two red pieces together and add the two blue pieces together, will always be the same. And we would draw the ellipse around that way. A major axis is the segment that contains the foci of the ellipse and has endpoints on the ellipse. The center is the midpoint of the major axis. The minor axis is a segment through the center with endpoints on the ellipse and perpendicular to the major axis. Vertices are the two endpoints of the major axis, and the covertices are the endpoints of the minor axis. So on the ellipse, there's going to be a stretched out part, and there's going to be a part that's smashed together. The one that is stretched out is your major axis, and that's going to have your vertices on it because it's bigger. It's the major one. The minor one's going to be the one that's squished together, so that's your minor axis, and those will be your covertices. So because it can be stretched two different directions, if it's stretched horizontally, that means our major axis is on the horizontal distance. So the A value is always going to be the larger value. So if this is stretched horizontally, then the A value goes with the X. If it is stretched vertically, the A value is with the Y because the larger number is going to stretch it vertically. Now, depending on which direction it is going, horizontal major axis or vertical major axis will determine our other coordinates, such as our foci, our vertices, our covertices, and our major and minor axes. So if we take a look at this equation, the value that is with the x is the larger denominator, so that means that is our a value. So it means we're in the form of x minus h squared over a squared plus y minus k squared over b squared is equal to 1. Now remember when you pull it out of the parentheses you change your signs. So we do know that our h value is 3, our k value is negative 1. If a squared is equal to 36, we take the square root of both sides, that means a is going to equal 6. And if b squared is equal to 9, take the square root of both sides, we are going to get that b is equal to 3. Now to find our foci, we are going to need to know our c value. We have two different formulas for c, but if you're looking for c, we're going to use c is equal to a squared minus b squared. And we know our a squared value is 36, our b squared value is 9. That tells me c is the square root of 27 which is approximately 5.2. Now because we do know this is going to be have our major axis horizontally, that does tell us which direction our center, foci, and vertices are because we got all of that information from this. So all of this tells us how to find our center, foci, vertices. So if we plug in our information, we do know that our h value is 3, our k value is negative 1, so our center is at 3, negative 1. Now for our foci, you're going to take h minus c, and you're going to take h plus c. If we do h minus c, this is going to give us a negative 2.2 2 and negative 1. And if we add it, this is going to give us 8.2 and negative 1. For the vertices, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do h plus a and h minus a. So h minus a, 3 minus 6, gives me negative 3 and negative 1. 
h plus a, 3 plus 6 gives us 9 and negative 1. Do the covertices, it's just h and k minus b. So negative 1 minus 3 gives us negative 4. And then we have h with k plus b, negative 1 plus 3 gives us 2. Our major, major axis is going to be y is equal to k, which is negative 1. Our minor axis is going to be x is equal to h, which is 3. So if we go to plot this, we're going to plot our major axis first. Sorry, that's going the wrong direction. We go to y equals a negative 1. y equals negative 1 is here, and then this will go horizontally. And then we will plot our minor axis. So we'll go to x is 3, and our minor axis is going to go this direction. Now our center is at 3, negative 1, which should make sense. It should be the center of your two axes. Our foci are at negative 2.2, negative 1, and 8.2, negative 1. Our vertices are negative 3, negative 1, and 9, negative 1. Our covertices are at 3, negative 4, and 3, 2. And our ellipse will go through the vertices and the covertices. But again, this should be stretched horizontally because the A value is larger and the A is with the X. Now before we can graph this one, we do need to get it in the correct form for an ellipse. So we are going to have to back up and do some other work first. So our original problem says 4x squared plus y squared minus 24x plus 4y plus 24 is equal to 0. The first thing we want to do is group all of our x's together, group all of our y's together, and take anything else to the other side of the equation. Now we do want to have values squared. We are trying to make these perfect square trinomials. So that when we factor it, we're just left with the binomial squared. So we are going to have to complete the square for the x and for the y. Now remember, when you're completing the square, you take your b value, you divide it by 2, and then you square it. And then you're going to add the positive and negative value to your problem. But before we can do this, you have to have the x squared by itself and the y squared by itself. So we may have to factor out a value. On this first one, on the x, we are going to have to factor out a 4. 4x four squared divided by 4 just leaves you with x squared, which is what you want. 24x divided by 4 leaves us with 6x. There's nothing that we have to factor on this one, but I'm going to go ahead and pull out a 1. So we remember that we have to hold the spot. So 1 squared plus 4y. And then we still have that equals negative 24. Now I left those big gaps because we are going to be completing the square. So we're going to fill in the information. For our x value, the b that goes with our x value is negative 6. So we're going to do negative 6 over 2 squared. Negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3 squared, and negative 3 squared gives us 9. So we're going to put a positive and a negative 9 into that problem, because it has to equal out to 0, because we're adding it and subtracting it, that's 0, so we are safe to do that step. Now, our yb value is 4, so we're going to do 4 over 2 squared, 4 divided by 2 is 2, and 2 squared gives us 4. So we're going to add a positive and a negative 4. Now when we're completing the square, we actually only want the positive version of this. So we're going to um, distribute the other part to the whatever the negative value is. So we can take it out of the parentheses. So we're going to take the 4 and distribute it to the negative 9. We're going to take the 1 and distribute it to the 4.
Now 4 times negative 9 gives us a negative 36. And 1 times negative 4 gives us a negative 4. Now we can go ahead and take that 36 and the negative 4 to the other side. To do that we're going to add them. And this is going to leave us with 4 times x squared minus 6x plus 9 plus 1 times y squared plus 4y plus 4 is equal to 16. Now the reason we did completing the square, so this was a perfect square. The value that's going to go into that square, that perfect square, will be whatever value you had inside the square here. So since this was a negative 3, this will be a negative 3. Because negative 3 times negative 3 does give us a positive 9, and negative 3 plus negative 3 gives us the negative 6. Now whatever value is squared here is what's going to be squared here, because 2 times 2 gives us 4, and 2 plus 2 gives us 4. So we have this factored correctly. Now if you remember, when we're looking at the standard form of the equation, it is always equal to 1. So to get this to be equal to 1, we are going to have to divide everything by the 16. And then we're going to simplify. So I have 4 on top, 16 on bottom. So this is just going to be x minus 3 squared over 4, because 4 goes into 16 4 times y plus 2 squared all over 16, because there's nothing to simplify on that one, is equal to 1. So our equation of our ellipse will be x minus 3 squared over 4 plus y plus 2 squared all over 16 is equal to 1. Now because 16 is larger than 4, we know 16 is our a squared value. And since the a squared value is with the x, we know the original form of this function looks like this. So now we can pull out our information. We know that our h value should be 3. We know our k value is negative 2. We know that a squared is equal to 16. We take the square root of both sides, then a is equal to 4. And we know that b squared is equal to 4. We take the square root of both sides, we know that b is equal to 2. But we still need to find our c value. Remember, c is equal to the square root of a squared minus b squared, or 16 minus 4. So c is equal to the square root of 12, which is approximately 3.5. Now because we do know that this is going to be, the major axis is going to be vertical, we do know these values. So we can substitute in and find our specific points. So our center is going to be at 3, negative 2. The foci is at h and k minus c, which will give us a negative 5.5. And it's going to be h and k plus which will give us 1.5. The vertices are h and k minus a, which is negative 6, and h with k plus a, which is a positive 2. Our co-vertices are h plus b and h minus b, so if we do h minus b first, we're going to have 1 and negative 2, and then if we add it, we're going to get 5 and negative 2. Our major axis is going to be x is equal to 3, and our minor axis is going to be y is equal to negative 2. So if we graph these, we're going to go our major axis first, which is at 3, and it's going to go vertically through that value. Our minor axis is at negative 2, and it will go horizontally through there. We know our center should be where the two axes meet. Our co-vertices are 3 and negative 5.5, 3 and 
we know our vertices are at 3 and negative 6 and 3 and 2. We know our covertices are 1 and negative 2 and 5 and negative 2. And they go through the vertices and covertices to make your ellipse. Now we can work this backwards. We can get be given specific information and then have to write the equation of the ellipse. When we do this, the important thing to know is the center is always the midpoint of your major axis, your minor axis. It's the center of your vertices, your covertices, or it's the center of your foci. So whenever you need to find the center, you are just going to do the midpoint. And the midpoint formula, if you remember from geometry or in algebra, is x1 plus x2 divided by 2 and y1 plus y2 divided by 2. So if we pick our major axis, this is our x1, our y1, x2, and y2. So our center will be at negative 6 plus negative 6 divided by 2 and 2 plus negative 8 divided by 2. Negative 6 plus negative 6 gives us negative 12 divided by 2 is negative 6. And 2 plus negative 8 is negative 6, divided by 2 is negative 3. So we know our center is at negative 6 and negative 3. So that means our h value is negative 6, our k value is negative 3. Now if we're looking at an ellipse, remember between on the major axis, from the center to the vertex, is a length of a. From the center to the other vertex is a length of a. So the whole length between the ver two vertices or the length of the major axis is 2a. So if you know the length of the major axis, half of that length will be a. The same thing can be said for b. We know we have b from the center out to a covertice, b from the center out to a covertice. So the whole length of the minor axis is 2b, or if I need to find the b value, it's just half the length of the minor axis. So if we take a look at our major axis, the x values are staying the same. So there's no distance between those points. But the y values are changing. So we need to see how far apart they are. How far is it from negative 8 to a positive 2? That has a length of 10. So we know the major axis has a length of 10. So if we find half of that length, then we're going to know that a is equal to 5. Now our minor axis in this case, the y's are staying the same, so we need to see how far apart the x's are. The x's are from negative 3 to negative 9, which is 6 units long. So if the whole minor axis is 6 units long, then half of 6 gives me 3, so our b value is 3. But now we need to decide which of the standard forms are we going to look at. So if we look at our major axis, you notice that the x values stay the same, but the y values change. So if we come back here and look at the standard forms, we're looking at the vertices. We want to decide in which form do the x values stay the same, but the y's are changing. And if this is vertical, the h value stays but the y value is the k plus or minus a, so that's the one that's changing. So that means this is the form we need to use. So we're going to be using the form x minus h squared over b squared plus y minus k squared over a squared is equal to 1. Now we just have to substitute in our values. Remember our h value is six, negative 6, so this will be x plus 6 squared over, if b is 3, b squared is going to give us 9. And then we're going to have y minus, or sorry, plus, because it's minus a negative, so y plus 3 squared over our a value is 5, 5 squared is 25, and that's going to equal 1. So this will be the equation of our ellipse in standard form. This time they're giving us the vertices and the covertices, uh, vertices and the foci. Now remember, vertices are just the two endpoints of the major axis, so we still know that a is equal to the half the length of the major axis 
or we can call A is equal to half the distance between the vertices. This time we have foci instead of co-vertices or the minor axis. So this time we have C, which is actually half the distance between the foci. We also need to find our center, which we're still going to use midpoint. So if we use our vertices, let's call this x1, y1, x2, and y2. So we're going to have negative 4 plus 6 over 2, and 4 plus 4 over 2. Negative 4 plus 6 is 2. 2 divided by 2 gives us 1. 4 plus 4 is 8. 8 divided by 2 gives us 4. Now if we look, the y values are staying the same. So the x's are the ones that change when you see how far apart those are. From negative 4 to 6 has a distance of 10. And half of 10 tells us that our a value is going to be 5. Again, the y values are staying the same. It's the x's that are changing. So from negative 2 to 4 is a length of 6. And half of 6 gives us 3. So we know our a value is 3. I'm sorry, our c value is 3. Now once again, if we look, we notice that the y values are staying the same in the vertices and the foci. So if we go back and look at the standard forms, we're looking at the vertices and the foci. And we need to find the form where the y values stay the same. So over here, the y values both are just k. You're not adding or subtracting to it. So the standard form we're looking for is going to be one that is um, the major axis is horizontal. So we do know the form we're going to use is x minus h squared over a squared plus y minus k squared over b squared is equal to 1. Right now we have h, k, a, and c. So we do need to find the value of b. Now we do know that c is equal to the square root of a squared minus b squared, or c squared is equal to a squared minus b squared. If c is 3, then c squared is 9. a is 5, so a squared is 25. If I subtract that 25 from both sides, we're going to get that negative 16 is equal to negative b squared. We need to get the b by itself, so we divide both sides by negative 1. We're going to get that b squared is equal to 16. Now, if you want to find the b value, you can, but we are just substituting in the b squared value, so we do not have to find b by itself. If we were graphing, you would need to find the b value, so you could find the values of the covertices. But if we write our equation now, we're going to have x minus 1 squared over a squared, which is 25 y minus k squared over b squared, which is 16, is equal to 1.